very good morning good afternoon good evening from whatever location you're watching us and tuning thank you so much uh for a brand new day brand new show happy to invite you to the point the point is a podcast chat show where we engage in different conversations with our hosts purposes of informing educating and impacting lives on this show today uh, it's an honor to have a man, go, a man who is going to introduce himself uh, for purposes of having this conversation today karibu uh thank you so much uh, duncan for this opportunity i really appreciate my name is bishop daniel Vashoke. i'm the overseer of glorious chapel church and uh, i appreciate this opportunity again thank you thank you so much bishop for the introduction uh for purposes of uh, those who are watching us from uh, their different locations we're coming to you live from Gloria, glorious chapel church located along at the junction of round uh, uh road and and, and outside road uh bishop for purposes of uh, our conversation would you kindly share with us um uh in a nutshell when we talk about um the enemy of revival in africa what are we talking about yeah thank you so much uh, for that question is a very important question it's also an area of uh, special interest to me because we've had a history of revival and now you'll hear the clamor for praying for revival in africa in churches but then i think if we are going to sustain what we are about to receive we need to be good students of history and right. uh, we know that the the purpose of history is to learn of the past failures uh, so that we can improve on now. So I've explored to see what have been the challenges of revival. Mm. So, so, so um, when we say um, revival, um, and, and, and you know some of these terms mean different things to different people, even, if, even before getting to the context of what are the challenges of revival, uh, perhaps... Uh, would, uh, would you would you paint a scenario on, on uh, when you say revival entirely what do you mean uh, thank you so much you know in the context i'm speaking about i'm speaking about the apostolic context and this we have a point of reference in the book of acts mm -hmm. uh, what was it about the church in the book of acts right. and we can see a blueprint there for example in the church of acts we could see there was a lot of vitality there was life in the church mm. there were supernatural things happening after the holy spirit came and specifically on the apostolic aspect we look at the workings of the holy spirit in the church are we seeing the work of christ being affected by the holy spirit mm. are we seeing uh, for example supernatural things happening are we seeing the harvest uh, coming to to the church are we seeing the church uh, revitalized to accomplish what jesus intended uh, if we see we don't see those kind of signs then there is a call and a need for revival thank you uh, to what extent would you say the modern church has uh, attempted or has revitalized um, 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 uh, the, 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 the 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 word of god in line with the the biblical context to what extent yeah uh, thank you so much and that brings us to this point of enemies of revival yes and uh, specifically when you ask the question of the the word of god how it has been revitalized in the church in africa is a whole discussion yes. and a fascinating one for yes. that matter yes. you know somebody said that uh, the church in africa and it's not only the church i think basically africa all around economically uh, education system uh, the church he gives a very good analogy of the story of Chinua Chembe in the book uh, things fall apart and he gives a scenario when missionaries came and mm. uh, how it was hard for the missionary christianity to have its inroads to africa and he gives a, a a good scenario of wrestling match i think you know wrestling match yes, yes. Uh, is the, uh, they say is the oldest match in africa yes. and uh, Chinua Achembe narrates a scenario of some characters there and one of the characters there was called uh, uh, th at least there were three and uh, one of them was a hero in those days in wrestling match and what you would happen uh, one was Okonko and then the other one was Amalinze, Amalinze the, cat. the Cat so uh, Amalinze the Cat used to pride himself that uh, he cannot touch the the, the soil. Yes. That means if in wrestling you can't touch the soil, you, then the one to touch the you are the, the you, hero. You, you are the hero. Yes, yes. Uh, so when the Okonko came, mm. there was a wrestling of 
uh, turning cyclic rounds, rounds between mm. Amaliza, the Kurds, and the Congo. Yes. And uh, that is the state of Africa, basically. Mm. We are in a state of a wrestling match. Uh, in a way, we are turning around things. And look at our politics. We don't know whether it's democracy which works. We don't know whether it's commun uh, communism. Mm. Uh, we don't know when it comes to systems of education. We've had it for four. We don't know whether it worked or it didn't work. Mm. We have another CBC. one. I've not even uh, <laughs> been able to know whether the CBC, CBC thing. Yes. Uh, so look, even design and fashion. Mm. I don't know what fits us actually. Mm. Uh, so. Now, when you come to Christianity, you'll find there are many things which we really need to address, even as Africans. Mm. And when we look into the issue of the word of God, we'll need to know what's the place of the word of God. And to your question is that mm. we've not given the word of God the place it ought to be in the church in Africa. We have not given the yeah. word of God the place it ought to be in Africa. Yeah. What are some of the threats to what you've exactly said, that we, are, we from a perspective, we've not given the word of God uh, its rightful place uh, in, in our society. What are some of the threats? Yeah, the threats we face is that we have raised a church uh, which, uh, which falls short of definition of what it actually is church. Uh, we fall short of uh, a Christianity which falls short of what would define as Christianity. Mm -hmm. We've raised believers who fall short the biblical definition of who is a believer and a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are some of the, the images I can use to paint uh, to define the church in Africa. Mm -hmm. And the uh, effects are obvious. And the part of it, like the emphasis of the day, will be one of the dangers I find, which is called syncretism. Mm -hmm. uh, syncretism is basically mixing of faith, yes. you know, mixing traditions. And uh, for us Christians, we mix the Bible and also we mix some traditions which are against the Bible. Mm. Not all traditions are wrong because everybody subscribes to some tradition in a way, mm -hmm. but not every tradition is uh, the, for the Bible. Some traditions contradict mm. the Bible. Thank so mm. that's where we get the challenge. Thank you. Not all traditions are bad mm. um, from, your, from your submission. I recall in the best-selling book, uh, it documents uh, that when the time came, Jesus uh, and his parents were asked to go back to their uh, village because it was time for baptism, in line with their tradition. So ideally, uh, it, it strengthens uh, what we are saying that not tradition, not all traditions are bad. But uh, from 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 um, the scripture perspective. How would one know that uh, this tradition uh, is uh, not good and this one is good? It's supposed to be, uh, we're supposed to hold on to, on to it. Yeah, thank you. Um, if, I would, if you would allow me to read scripture. Granted. In Acts chapter 17, verse 22 and 24, there are two verses which says, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mass Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship. Him declare, declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in the temples made with hands. Now, uh, when we come to that question, what do we know what is right mm -hmm. and what is not right? Yes. You look in the scenario of Athens where Paul went, mm -hmm. when he was moving around there, he noted a few things. And yes. he said one of the things he noted was superstition. Mm -hmm. You know, superstition comes if we don't know the God we worship. Yes. In John chapter 4, verse 23, where Jesus told the Samaritan woman, that time is actually in the in the whole discourse. Mm. He at some point told her that you don't know what you worship. So, if we first don't know what we worship, then we are bound to get to superstition. Uh, basically, superstition is alluding every occurrence to spirituality, mm. which may not be the case. Now, if we we don't have the best way, mm -hmm. uh, fundamentally, yes. How the Christian should know God is through the scripture, scripture. Fundamentally. fundamentally. And if and that's the weakness in the Church of Africa that we we are not good in discipleship. Mm -hmm. We've not discipled the church. Mm -hmm. We've not ta taught church who even what salvation means. Because you see, before the coming of Christianity in Africa, mm -hmm. 
it's not that Africans who are not religious people. Yes. They, they were religious and they subscribed to what is called ATR, mm -hmm. African traditional religions. religion. Yes. Now, Africans knew God, mm -hmm. and but they didn't, uh, they never heard about Jesus, mm -hmm. but they, they heard about God. But Jesus is a strange concept in Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, the only way we distinguish those aberrancy tendencies to know who whom should we follow is mm -hmm. it what africans are saying is it what bible is saying fundamentally is by knowing the word of god rightfully interpreted that's when we can really distinguish between whether we are worshiping traditional gods mm -hmm. or actually we are worshiping the true gods uh, what did you say about those people still cling on their traditions uh, and they believe because uh, you said uh, the ART um, there are those who still hold on to uh, some deity that they call uh, the supernatural, supernatural being um, and, and, and uh, the way religion or the, the way the, the, the church has morphed of, the, of, 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 of these days is that uh, there's some churches or some tendencies of tolerating uh, a lot of things that are not biblical in the context of wanting to continue living as a church. What do you say about that? Yeah, uh, very important question for our discussion. Actually, that's what you've defined as syncretism. That's the definition of syncretism. Mm. This is where somebody takes all the cultures indiscriminately mm -hmm. because we should sense our practices. Mm. Because the Bible is our foundation, a fundamental source of uh, uh, practice. Mm -hmm. There's, if anything contradicts the Bible, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who practices that. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a white, whether it's a Chinese, whether it's a black. Mm -hmm. If any practice is contradictory to the teaching of the Bible, mm -hmm. is outrightly wrong. Yes, And that is the standard. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter who practices what. If it contradicts the Bible, yes. then it is wrong. The tendency to embrace everything mm -hmm. so that we can embrace everybody is not the Bible. Mm. Narrow is the way, mm. and very few people have chosen it. At any point, we'll not have everybody getting to the kingdom of God. I did not have the benefit of going to good schools, the one you went to, so I cannot pronounce that word, syncretism. Mm. I don't know what, <laughs> I cannot, but I know what it means. Mm. Uh, my, 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 my question is, um, can someone uh, be in the middle? Uh, what I mean is, uh, practice uh, the way of the Lord, in line with the scripture and also practice your old traditions to the extent that they don't offend uh, Christianity. Um, the, the, uh, now, that brings to my mind of uh, one man who who defined what of, you've said. He was called Desmond Tutu. Mm -hmm. No, Desmond Tutu, that Archbishop. Of, uh, he defined the scenario you're talking about as faith is schizophrenia, mm. uh, that fragmentation of mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, you remember the the tale of the of the hyena, yes. Uh, who this the Wanyomachama this side, and this side, mm. and what happened to the hyena, mm. and they wanted to have all at the same time. And now in Christianity, you cannot have all. Yes, uh, it is either Jesus or not. Or not, and that is what the Bible says. Uh, you either called or, or, or that is the thing. Oh, okay. You are either called or okay. You are, so there is no middle ground. Yes, that pluralism and mm. tolerance mm. Uh, does not subscribe uh, mm. to the fundamental Christianity. Yes, yeah. Um, the, 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 there are those who hold a view that uh, um, as long as the relationship between one person and the almighty god is clear uh, you should ideally not subscribe to uh, the outside world that come in different form whether it is a religion or a lack of it what do you tell them uh you see we christianity is not only found on subjective faith mm -hmm. subjective faith means what we hold to ourselves mm. what comes from us yes but we have the objective faith yes meaning we have already laid down principles yes the already fundamental principles which are laid the objective yes it doesn't matter how we feel yes so all our feelings and uh, our, everything we think our perspectives yes. our worldviews must be sensitive
answered. Must be answered. Against the standard, which is the word of God. Because word of God. man is man is fallen. Yes. Uh, man is fallen. He can think everything. Yes. We've had people think strange things. Yes. You know, and they are convinced they are right. Uh, so because everybody can have a conviction, yes, we don't go by everybody's conviction, but we go by the conviction which is written in the word of God. Thank you. Is there something like uh, religious superstition? Definitely so. Actually, the scripture we have read when mm-hmm. Paul was moving around Athens, mm-hmm. and uh, he said that when he passed by, mm-hmm. he saw their devotions, and he found one of the, uh, he said, he perceived in every way they are superstitious. Mm. So what do we mean by, and this actually is the greatest enemy of Christianity Mm. in Africa. Mm. We attribute, we allude, Mm. those allusions of every phenomenon Mm. is spiritual. You know, uh, I've written written on this and uh, one of the things I've captured that given an illustration of a student Mm -hmm. who is very prayerful Mm -hmm. and uh, she doesn't revise for her Mm end-term exams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, the obvious is there. (laughs) That's why you are laughing. (laughs) (laughs) She will fail the exam. (laughs) And I don't know whether you have discerned. I don't know whether you have discerned she will fall. (laughs) But it is outright that she will not perform. Yes. Now, this this student goes home mm-hmm. and the parents who are so spiritual and mm-hmm. powerful, yes. they start binding that demon mm-hmm. of failing exam mm-hmm. and monitoring spirits mm-hmm. which hindered the girl. Mm-hmm. So from, that is basically superstition. From passing an exam she didn't prepare for. Uh, she didn't prepare for. <laughs> <laughs> so I always say spirituality without responsibility is a superstition. Spirituality yeah. without responsibility is superstition. Is superstition exactly? So the, yes, there is religious superstition. Definitely, is there. And would you say uh, um, it is one of the things that continue to undermine uh, the revival of? of, of yeah, you see, that, that, that's important. Look at. Let me give a good case mm-hmm. uh, in our nation. For example, mm-hmm. we we are called to pray for the government, mm-hmm. and. Uh, in fact, sometimes we invite even uh, foreign ministers to come. Mm-hmm. Our brethren overseas, mm-hmm. they come, we pray for the nation. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always thought I had an opportunity, I would say. Uh, we we checklist the prayer items. Mm-hmm. And uh, let me tell you, we might end up not having a prayer item. Because I would say, for example, if we are trying to analyze the... We are praying for poor people. Mm-hmm would request the the government to give us yes. their promises mm-hmm. on the economy and fighting poverty mm-hmm. and they tell us what they have done about it yes and uh, i would say they go and do the assignment mm-hmm. and we knock out that from their prayer items yes we go another one about road accidents mm-hmm. we see that some highways are one way mm-hmm. you see there are structural problems mm-hmm. And I would say, government, you promised to build this 100 kilometers road along this place from Nairobi to Nakuru. Yes. If you did it at your carriage, we minimize accidents. Yes. Now we strike that out of the prayer yeah, items. Yes. So some things are structural. Yes. There are responsibilities we need to take. Uh, if the government puts people who are not competent in places of work, mm-hmm. then we'll still continue suffering. Mm-hmm. Now, the solution is not prayer, mm-hmm. is you put the right people to do the job. So if we cannot separate those things, mm-hmm. we'll always incline ourselves to super spirituality, uh, which actually uh, is not the right thing. Right. Yeah. So other than um, uh, 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 so superstition, um, is uh, dogmatism part of uh, enemies of revival? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, dogmatism basically is holding so stiffly, so mm-hmm. rigidly to some beliefs you held. Yes. You know, when you look into the scripture, when uh, at some point in history, mm-hmm. over many years, yes. God commanded mm-hmm. that the the serpent which had been raised, is God who had commanded Moses mm-hmm. to raise the brazen serpent uh, on the tree so that those who are bitten by the small snakes, mm-hmm. uh, they could look at the serpent and then they could be healed. Now, that's what God had spoken Mm. then. Over years, God instructed that that brazen snake should be destroyed. Mm. The God who had said it should be raised, he said it should be destroyed. Why? Because the the Israelites continued to hold it 
uh, when it was overdue. Mm -hmm. That was God's revelation, which was overtaken by time. time. And this time God was speaking about another revelation. Mm -hmm. So if I would take that as a dogma, mm. it was overtaken by time. time. We need to capture present revelation. Yes. What is God speaking to us? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what is God speaking to us in line of uh, the enemies of revival, the African church? Uh, what are we required to do? Because I know the, the, the Bible has got solutions to all the problems that we are facing as, as, as a people. Mm. So what in specific terms from uh, your, where you are seated, what in specific terms are we required to do uh, to overcome these uh, enemies of revival? Uh, in scripture, there is a scripture that says, uh, it was Jesus who was saying that, and the servant who knew God's will, mm -hmm. but he did not prepare himself, uh, he'll be subjected to some punishment. Mm -hmm. uh, so having known the will of God, uh, first is a call for preparation. You know, it's not enough to know the will of God. Mm -hmm. When we know it, we need to prepare. Now we need to sit down on the drawing board. Mm -hmm. We are praying for revival. That is one item, mm -hmm. but it's not all. Now we need to sit in the drawing board and look into what kind of preparation should we need. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, back to my emphasis on the word of God. Yes. Uh, how well have we prepared people in terms of teaching? Mm -hmm. How well can ministers handle? Yes. The uh, uh, right word of God yes. in terms of discipleship. Yes. If today there came a move of God, mm -hmm. for example, in Africa, yes. and uh, cripples start to walk all over, mm. and people start to prophesy, yes. without what I'm talking about preparation in terms of equipping in the word of God, yes. do you think it will be better or worse? <laughs> we are already in enough mess. Yes. We'll get into more trouble. Correct. So having known this revival, mm. there's need for preparation. Yes. And this kind of a preparation, my emphasis is it should be we need to look into the fivefold ministry. Yes. The ministry of teaching the word of God. Yes. I feel in me that's the main emphasis of the spirit. In fact, I'm saying one of the things that will mark revival is the word of God, mm. the hunger for the word. The hunger for the word. Because you know what dis distinguishes us from anybody else? Mm -hmm. Jesus said it's the way, the truth, and the life. It's the truth. If you don't have this word, mm -hmm. then you'll find a lot of man manipulations will come in. There will rise a lot of false prophets yes. because they don't know the truth. There will rise a lot of diviners, yes. you know, because they are not founded in the word. Yes. So back to your question is, one of the preparations, one of the things we need now is preparation. What kind of a preparation? Equipping people will also equip others. Are there chances that uh, uh, the good book contradicts itself? Because um, I hear you saying that um, one of the ways uh, of overcoming the, the enemies of revival is through preparation. Um, and uh, you know this better than I do, uh, that uh, in the book, I think it's John, uh, either of the letters or the, I think it's the letters, the first John 1 15, 1 12. I think it says, For those who accepted them, he gave them the power to belong. Does it mean that uh, all you need is just to accept him to belong, or there's a responsibility beyond belonging? That's, a, that's important. Let's get back to a good illustration. Yes. Uh, you give birth to a boy. Yes. You've done, and uh, th that's something so good. Yes. Uh, you can you can uh, confirm that uh, what you'll do after that birth mm. is what will mean more, sometimes even more than giving birth. If you just give birth, the, the child is okay mm. and everybody will celebrate. Yes. Uh, but I think that will just be beginning of the main thing. So if we just get to Christianity, there's a process of growth. Yes. We need to grow. Just like that child, mm. we need nourishment. Yes. And we need to develop some level of immunity. Mm -hmm. In this case, I'm talking about in Christianity, the more we grow in Christianity, the more we develop spiritual immunity. Again, mm. it's cults and false teachers. Mm. You know, why, why are false teachers and cults having a toll in Christianity? Mm. One of the reasons is simply because this child was born. We are going, yesterday, uh, I, I, we had a discussion in, the, in uh, one of the universities and one of the things that rose up because they are planning for an evangelistic meeting, mm. I advised them, please don't go for that major campaign 
before you have trainers. Yes. First of all, send trainers mm. and sit with the local churches. Yes. And then train disciples. Yes. So that those child children will be born. Mm -hmm. uh, he gave them the power to become. When yes. they'll be given the power to become. Yes. Then the next thing is that they will need people to teach them actually what has happened first to yes. them. Yes. Then it starts from there. So ideally, you are you are, you are saying that. Mm. Um, you, even beyond accepting Christ yeah. and uh, that earns you the power to belong, yeah. there is responsibility that comes with that. Yeah. Therefore, that requires you to prepare in line mm. with the dictates of the Bible. You are very right. Uh, which, is, which, is, which, is, which, is, uh, which is very critical to, to note at this point. Uh, uh, Bishop, you, uh, so far you've mentioned uh, about um, dogmatism, um, uh, religion without responsibilities, uh, superstition, uh, you call it syncretism. 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 Mm. Uh, what are the uh, enemies of revival are we uh, dealing with from a Christian perspective? Yeah, the other enemies of revival, I could say, is the way the church is structured. Mm -hmm. uh, because, for example, uh, you'll find... Uh, when you look, look into the scripture, for example, it says mm -hmm. he gave some to be apostles, some to be uh, a prophets, some to be evangelists, pastors, mm -hmm. and teachers mm -hmm. uh, for the main cause of equipping the body. Now, when we are talking about equipping this, uh, that equipping part is very important. Now, if already we have a great confession in that structure, mm -hmm. uh, because I, 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 I did a clip which is there in, on, on Facebook, mm -hmm. and uh, I gave a good illustration of the, the immigration of wild beasts, mm -hmm. you know, that season of immigration. And I say, this is what is happening in the church. It's not about harvest, it's just immigration. And I say the immigration of the wild beasts from, uh, uh, from Tanzania, Serengeti, mm. uh, Savo, uh, then Mala. The next season, mm -hmm. if you visited Tanzania and you had visited Mala this time, you go to Serengeti, mm. you'll see the, and see, isn't that, the, isn't that the wild beast I saw? The other time. Yeah. The other time. Yes. <laughs> so th there's no harvest simply mm. because it's immigration. Mm. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons that is a structural issue. Mm. Uh, how well do we have a personnel mm. to manage the church, yes. so to speak? Yes. Not management in terms of projects, mm. but management in terms of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Yes. Are we having people who are trained people basic things about why should you belong to the church? Mm -hmm. What is church? Who are you in the church? Mm. Who are you in Christ? Mm. Whom am I? Mm. Am I an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist and all that? If there is a mix where like everybody feels is a prophet, mm. everybody is a pastor, everybody is an apostle, and then we find like very few people are evangelists mm. and like no teachers. Yes. And then uh, that kind of a structural challenge is so real, which really affects the body of Christ. Okay. Yeah. Uh, while still on that point of the the organizational structure of the church, do you please highlight um, uh, whether this is an issue? Uh, because as an observer perspective. You find um, two groups of people within the church. Uh, there are people who are so much attached to uh, the word of God and the relationship with God, while others are so much attached to the church. So, and, and, and this sometimes is confusing in the sense that you think you are attached to uh, your relationship with God uh, versus how the attachment you have with the church, which is, which is a place of worship. Could that also help in, 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 in posing a challenge to the revival? Yeah, you, you see, basically, I've been saying whenever revival comes, mm -hmm. we need to redefinition of terms. Mm -hmm. For example, we need to redefine what is church. Yes. Who are you as a believer? Yes. And uh, much of the perspective today is the same story I mentioned about the Samaritan yes, woman. woman yes. The interpretation and definition of what is church mm -hmm. is that church is a place. Because mm -hmm. she tells Jesus, you Jews worship on the, in Jerusalem. Our ancestors used to worship in Jerusalem. While, while yes. And as Samaritans, we worship in, on the mountain. On the mountain, yes. Uh, because that's where the Samaritan used to go on Mount mm. Gerizim, mm. Uh, where their cult thrived. Mm. So the mentality of this, the interpretation of this Samaritan woman about what worship should be, mm -hmm. to her it was a venue. Mm. It was a place. Okay. A, a little misinterpretation indeed. Mm. Uh, because first worship is not a place. 
is not a venue. Worship is a relationship with God. with God. Because what Adam lost was not a building. Mm. As a matter of fact, relationship there were God. no buildings. Yes. What Adam lost was not keyboard mm. and a guitar. Yes. Because those things were not there. Mm. If we show people like what people are losing is a building, a mm. structure and the yes. physical things, mm. then it shows that kind of definition. Because it will not apply within some timelines of worship. While we know right from the Old Testament, people used to worship. So, one, we need to define what is worship, is yes. a relationship with God, yes. because when you get born again, what has happened is your restoration. Mm -hmm. we, a, a, a relationship is restored. Yes. Somebody was lost, yes. and he has gone back to the Father. So, with that understanding, then venue comes number two, two. or three, not number one, mm. because you can be in the right venue, mm. supposedly, yes. but if your relationship with God is, is not there, yes. you are not worshipping. Yes. You may not be in that congregation, but your relationship with God somewhere, mm -hmm. you have it. You are worshipping. So we need to define that. The attachment to places and uh, venues and objects mm -hmm. and elements, uh, the, that's where we get to a to aberrant beliefs mm -hmm. and attributing a lot of sacredness and the spiritualities to places, to people, which is not a New Testament concept. Yeah, where well, I ask uh, that is because I know mm. I know of a, a number of people who they, you know, human beings have this tendency of attachment. Mm. You find you find folks who are born, uh, let's say, in Karatina, mm. uh, and that's where they have grew, uh, they've grown and uh, they become adults, but now they have moved uh, to Kerugoya. And then every, whenever they get opportunity, they have to go back to their church. Uh, and there are locals, there are lots of church even where they live. So it was important that you raise the fact that uh, it's actually what matters most is the relationship between you and God, even before mm. the place of uh, worship comes in. And also additionally, yes. it's very important for uh, believers to know that the issue of church is very spiritual. Mm. Every time you you need to change, mm -hmm. you need to pray to God. Yes. You read into the Bible in the Old Testament, I think Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15, yes. God says, I'll give you pastors, I'll give you shepherds. Yes. I think also in the first Samuel 7, 10, mm -hmm. he says, and I'll give a place to you. I, I, I'll give you a place. Mm. Uh, it's God who makes us lie beside quiet waters. Mm. It is him who leads us in green pastures. So we need the leading of God mm. when we are making the choice of church. Yes. Because a church has a lot of implications in your destiny. Yes. And if you just make carnal decisions, you'll be spiritually dislocated. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that puts me to, takes me to the next question that I had. Um, is, is there cultism within Christianity? And is cult if yes, is cultism and one of another, another enemy of revival? Definitely so. Indeed, especially in our times. Yes. And uh, because right now we have a lot of prophets. Yes. We have a lot of seers. Yes. We have a lot of pastors. Yes. You know, everybody is there. Yes. Uh, some are true, mm -hmm. some are not true. Yes. Some are true, mm -hmm. but they're not equipped. Mm -hmm. They lack their capacity. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be a genuine, uh, you can be a genuine man, mm -hmm. but if you fly an aeroplane mm -hmm. and you've never been in the school of flying, yes. you'll crash it genuinely. That is true. Uh, so they are, they are genuine people yes. doing ministry. But ill equipped. Not equipped. Yeah. So they crash. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, are there are there instances that you'd say, even the way, uh, and I know this one again speaks to what you just said, being ill-equipped. Even there's a, there's a possibility of using the same tool, which is the Bible, uh, not to achieve the same objective yeah. as part of the enemy of revival, where you find people using the Bible the wrong way, and uh, that remains. Uh, one of the challenges that still affect revival. Yeah, that is true. You see, Paul says in 2 Timothy 2.15, mm -hmm. study to show yourself approved, mm -hmm. a workman that needs not to be ashamed, mm -hmm. rightfully dividing the word of truth. Mm -hmm. So you see several things there. He's told to study, mm -hmm. to gain approval from God, yes. so that consequently he'll be able to divide the word of truth. Yes. So this word of truth needs 
uh, they, they are principles of Bible interpretation mm. because anybody cannot interpret the Bible yes. the way they want. And this applies, I think, is a natural law mm. everywhere. Mm. If you, you if you're doing medicine, yes. you don't treat people the way you want. Yes. Uh, yeah, back to the pilot, you don't fly the way you want. Yes. To the farmer there who is mm. who is doing some wheat farming, mm. he doesn't just f f uh, f plant also the wheat. Mm. How he feels. Yes. You the see? way of doing it. Yeah. yeah. There's a way of the natural law. Exactly. Yeah. So even Bible, there are principles of Bible interpretation. If we lack that kind of an equipping, mm -hmm. we are bound to be in error. Yes. We'll be so subjective in our interpretation. And sometimes if we have personal problems, yes. we'll infiltrate to the Bible yes. and make the Bible say what we want. If we have vested interest, mm. similarly, yes. we shall infiltrate the, the vested interest again yes. Yes. and the Bible will say what we want. So there must be Bible and that's where we come to training yes. so that we can be trained to do Bible interpretation, which is called hermeneutics. Thank you. Um, Bishop, is regulation of the church uh, the way to deal with enemies of revival or it is another enemy of revival? The, uh, the government yeah. regulation, regulation uh, by the government yes. will be uh, a great uh, problem that should never happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but the church itself, you yes. see, there has been the alternative mm. of church uh, regulating herself. Mm. And that goes back to Ephesians chapter 4, mm -hmm. whereby we are talking about a structure. Yes. Uh, like, for example, are you a teacher? Yes. Then you need an apostle. Yes. Are you an evangelist? Mm -hmm. Then you need a pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Bible itself has a structure. Yes. If sub we subscribe to, then this chaos will know not be where to be found. So the state should not regulate us because then Satan will get through that. Mm -hmm. They'll also ill motived people will come in. Yes. And then will be disadvantaged. Yes. But the church itself should sit down and see how do we work it out. Can the church regulate itself? And not really possible. Okay. Not really possible because okay. again that is free, you know, yes. to, to do that is a, is a, you are within a freedom which you are enjoying yes. constitutionally mm -hmm. and you there's nothing compelling you mm. like, to be regulated by anybody yes. so the issue of freedom comes in yes now it becomes intricate do you, do you think the abuse of freedom that exists is also another threat to revival at any point uh, freedom uh, will always be abused Yes. is a real threat because there is no answerability. Yes. Uh, the other day, I've, I've moved around and I see, I found several mad people preaching. Mm. Mad people. <laughs> in fact, one I've seen physically. Yes. And uh, others have found them in social media. Mm. And the crowd is there. You know, the crowd is just there mm. and they're happy. Yes. So, if we talk about freedom, yes. then uh, even mad people. Yes will preach and then what, what will be the safety of the people yes yeah and and and, and at that at that point uh, the masses are the one who are at risk so because not everyone knows the word and 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 um that uh, continues to be a problem in the sense that uh, there are many preachers out there who are um, coming on the background of the word, but ideally they're either ill-equipped or they are not, they are, they are, they are not genuine uh, uh, servants of God. So how, from your perspective, uh, how best would the church, uh, or what best should the church do to actually overcome that very challenge of even facing the threat even internally? Because ideally, these are people who come, who use Christianity and the church uh, but for their own uh, advantage, which is not in line with the desires and the dictates of the Bible. So uh, ideally, what should uh, be done from the church perspective? Should there be some form of vetting? Uh, or what, what ideally, what should it be? Yeah, I think, uh, you see, uh, some things, as much as they are not, uh, we cannot uh, explicitly say mm. uh, they are embedded in law, but you see, 
anyone serving the public mm. uh, for the sake of public interest yes. there should be a level of confidence yes. which is created mm. and that is where these days i think the government as you register the church for mm. example you have to have a certain level of education mm. uh, uh, precisely in uh, in theology mm -hmm. so that at least uh, it's just a process to see whom are we entrusting people mm. because the government has a responsibility to safeguard the citizenship yes the citizens rather Yes. So there are some of those kind of measures that yes. before today you register ministry, he has a demand you have to qualify a certain level, yes. at least one of you. Yes. Uh, then secondly, I think the church itself should initiate a lot of teaching forums. Yes. Uh, in a higher level, there should be institutions of theology. There are mm. so few today in Africa. Yes. In Kenya, there are few. Mm. And these institutions of theology also should have a good process of registration yes. in a, within the same fraternity of churches yes. so that we don't again have institutions which are cultic. Yes. And uh, there, so we should have Bible schools there. Mm. We should have short courses. Mm. Uh, we should have maybe vocational trainings. Mm. We should have at least to make it possible to as many people to get there and learn some basics. Yes. Yeah. Um, that is on the part of the church ministers. Um, that is from where you see it as a church. Is there any, is there any that for the church to do some awareness on the part of the masses? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, through constant teachings that you said by pointing at the direction of the bible the ah, scripture yeah. as a way of uh, as as a as the, the very basic way of dealing with enemies of revival thank you you see i've been really emphasizing mm -hmm. uh, in my social media platforms mm -hmm. yes. that any minister who does not teach the word of god mm -hmm. Uh, is doing a serious disservice to mm. the body of Christ because mm. every minister, when you look into the Bible, the Bible shows any leader of the church must be apt to teach. Mm. He must be having a capacity of Bible literacy mm. to dispense knowledge about the word. Yes. So there must be an emphasis for the teaching of the word of God. Mm -hmm. And then I've always also said that we cannot preach to people in the crusade ground mm. an evangelistic message mm -hmm. and when they come to church mm. we continue doing the crusade it's like the extension mm. we do an evangelistic sermons yes when people get from the harvest field and they get to the church mm -hmm. deliberately the ministers yes. should teach and if possible teach systematically thank you yeah uh, for lack of a better word is commercialization of the word another threat to revival it is and it has been. You see, whenever history, if you looked into history, we have found that uh, there has always been vested interests. Mm -hmm. Because I think the hardest thing is to censor the hearts of men. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't know the interests that are driving people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the aspect of interest in a commercialization and merchandise even yes. when you read in the bible mm -hmm. you'll find that i think in second peter chapter 2 mm -hmm. uh, uh, peter showed that there will be false prophets mm -hmm. and part of their vested interest is to merchandise the people mm -hmm. so that they can get money it's really there mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact it's the main interest of false preachers and and uh, those uh, teachers uh, false teachers it's basically it narrows down to finances narrows down to finances yeah so um in your own admission it is and has always been and uh do you foresee it continuing being a, ch being a challenge uh, yeah yeah how yeah. best could you, d could you deal with it yeah if you looked into end time prophecies mm -hmm. you read the prophecy of jesus in matthew 24 you read the end time prophecies of second timothy chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 you'll find that end time one of the things that will mark the end time is greed mm -hmm. the love of money paul mm -hmm. says but mark this there will be perilous times in the last days that mm -hmm. is second timothy chapter 3 verse 1 and mm -hmm. 2 and one of the things it says people will be lovers of money so the level of great greed moving along by what i call the spirit of the antichrist mm -hmm. the spirit of the age mm -hmm. is people amassing themselves as much as they can mm -hmm. and uh, one of the best back to your point the best way to counter false teachings is to teach the right thing teach we right just thing. have to teach people 
the Bible. Let's teach them what is the kingdom of God all about. Mm -hmm. Let's teach them who is Jesus and what did he come to do? Mm -hmm. Did Jesus come so that you can get a car? Mm -hmm. What about in the days of Paul when there were no cars? Mm -hmm. Did he experience the blessedness of God? Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to teach people the word. That is the best solution for aberrant teachings. So we need to teach people uh, the word of God. Um, is there a tendon between teaching and doing? Yes, part of what we should teach is doing. Yes. Yeah, we should. You see, Jesus said that you go teach people, mm -hmm. make disciples of all nations, mm -hmm. teaching them, number one, to obey Yes. all things. So you see, there is the part of teaching, yes. and the second part is doing. He says, teach them, and the first subject you teach them yes. is to obey. Because uh, at the risk of digressing, uh, one of the crimes that uh, Pastor Mackenzie of the Shakaola massacre uh, was accused of is uh, forcing his people to abscond food. But when he was taken in prison, he accused the state of not giving them food. Mm -hmm. So is it the question of uh, do as I say, not as I do? Yeah, and back, <laughs> to, the, to, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> back to the question, that's why we need revival. Yes. Because when there's no revival, what we have is religion. Mm. And religion does not empower mm -hmm. the, the adherence yes. to doing. Yes. Re when revival, when there's a move of God, yes. the Holy Spirit is yes. at work. Yes. And one of the, what the Holy Spirit does mm -hmm. is actually to help Help us to do yes. what the will of God. Yes. So one mark of lack of revival mm -hmm. is people becoming religious like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and Sadducees yes. who say but they cannot do. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Spirit moves, mm -hmm. even a slight problem live alone the extent of Mackenzie, mm -hmm. there's always a conviction of the Holy Spirit yes. which makes people to repent. Yes. And they always so they are so sensitive to sin. So revival always will come and solve this part of without revival mm -hmm. you'll see the book uh, the bible like a book of laws yes. which supposedly becomes so hard to fulfill thank you yeah. uh, even as we head to home stretch uh when i when i when i mentioned that i'm i'm having a conversation with the uh, bishop Rashuki, uh, i was asked to to put this question to you uh that uh without uh the threat of hell and the promise of heaven do you think you'd have christians and then so think people will be Christians. Yeah, thank you for that. Yes. You see, that would start us to define about what is the purpose of God. Yes. And uh, that purpose is we dread from Genesis chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse, verse 8. Yes. And what happened there is in the cool of the day yes. when God visited, the Bible says Adam and Eve, when they had God, mm -hmm. they fled from his presence. Mm -hmm. So, what was broken there is a relationship. And the redemptive plan starts from that part now mm. when Jesus, when God said, and the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. Mm -hmm. He gave a promise of the seed of the woman who was mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the whole Bible is the story, is the redemption story. Mm -hmm. And what is the redemption story? Mm -hmm. One is to restore man back to God. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Yes. Everything else is a peripheral. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is to restore man mm -hmm. to God. So, uh, if uh, if fact hell didn't appear there, mm -hmm. you see, even in Genesis we don't see hell. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Yes, so, yes. Uh, so that should not be the main thing because what God wants is relationship, mm -hmm. and this is where we get worship. Yes. Yeah. God wants people to relate with people yes. who can worship Him. So hell uh, doesn't because ideally there are, yeah. there are people say that uh, the reason why why many people are Christians or have are believers is for the threat of uh, hell and the promise of heaven, but you've clarified that. Uh, the other thing I also ask to, uh, to ask to put to you to, for clarification is um, um, we read uh, that, that uh, religion is the opium of the poor, uh, but you say there's a difference between religion uh, and, 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 and uh, Christianity. Christianity. Yeah. Uh, so what do you tell those who mistake the two to mean one yeah i would say first um christianity is a relationship between one one and god mm. uh, that is basically the definition of what is worship mm -hmm. that intimacy yes is the definition of uh, of worship yes religion does not offer that worship yes and you will subscribe to uh, to a certain religion because of other interests yes but not that kind of worship yes 
So what I will tell them, there's no vitality in religion. Mm -hmm. And that's why you'll find religious will be cluttered with a lot of laws, mm -hmm. do's and don'ts. Yes. Because you can only be uh, aligned mm -hmm. to it because mm -hmm. of some restrictions. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see, when you are a Christian, mm -hmm. you come to God because you love him. Yes. You know, you want a relationship with him. Yes. God to want a relationship with you. Yes. So these are two parties who are after relationship. Okay. And when you follow Jesus because of that kind of a, 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 an approach, mm -hmm. then it's very different if you followed somebody because you are fearing this, you are mm -hmm. fearing consequences, you are fearing ABCD. Thank you. Mm. Uh, is, is not believing or the growth of uh, the group that does not believe uh, a threat to revival? There are those who don't believe in existence of God. Uh, is there continued growth in numbers a threat to revival? Actually, it's not a threat because what revival does, mm -hmm. uh, the, the emergence, mm -hmm. the, the emergence of those people yes. is another sign there's no revival. Okay. The emergence of those th those people you're talking about, the atheists, mm. uh, agnostics, yes. traditionalists, yes. the the emergence of those people shows the land has no revival. Mm -hmm. The they are prime targets of revival. Mm. Yeah, to know that revival has come. Yes, those are the people who come to Jesus, and uh, at any point they they never hindered. Yes, you see when there is no. Uh, when there is no, when when there is darkness yes. in a house, if you enter this house and there was darkness, yes, you don't blame the darkness. Yes, you go to the switch. Yes, and if there is no light, yes, you blame the authorities in charge of distribution of power. Lightness, li light came because of darkness. Exactly, <laughs> that, that is the thing. So if darkness is there, yes, you know, I've always you see the Bible says in Genesis one one, God mm. created the heavens and the earth, mm -hmm. and the darkness was over the surface of the deep. Yes. So the default state of the world is darkness. Yes. Light is an intrusion. So when light is not there, mm -hmm. the default state is darkness. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Bishop, Bishop, uh, he, this is a very interesting conversation that uh, we can talk over it for ages. Uh, as we head to towards the end of this particular conversation, uh, I want you to focus on this camera and then talk to the people uh, in light of the conversation we've had and any other thing that uh, you might want to put across. As we continue praying for revival, I would uh, put this forward. That servant who knew God's will, but he did not prepare. Jesus said that he'll be punished. If we are sure, knowing that the will of God is revival for na the nations, then the next thing we must be asking ourselves, how well are we preparing for this revival? If we don't prepare for revival in terms of studying the word of God and equipping people, then even if this revival come, it will be hijacked, for example, by uh, manipulations, it will be hijacked by deception, it will be hijacked by divination, and we'll still retract back uh, where we have been. So I emphasize that if we are seriously praying for revival, let's get to preparation, let's get to our Bibles, let's study the Bible, let's divide it rightly and teach others. Then we can now say, we are ready for revival. God bless you and thank you. Thank you so much, Bishop, for that uh, particular insightful conversation. Um, and, and you've said uh, no better place to leave, at it, to leave it at rather than a call for a call to action that let's read the Bible. Let's, let's endeavor to stand by the teachings of the Bible uh, because the Bible is, uh, has got every solution to every problem, whether real uh, or imagined. And, and, and uh, to, as I end, uh, I wish to thank uh, our viewers who have subscribed to the channel, The Point, and, and, and ask a call on those who have not subscribed to uh, have a moment and uh, subscribe to the channel uh, to continue supporting the production of this content and, uh, and many more that are, are, are yet to come. And, and, and Bishop, uh, Bishop, those, those who say that uh, I cannot comprehend the Bible or the Bible is not to be comprehensible, comprehended, comprehended, uh, to, you cannot comprehend the Bible unless you have the Holy Spirit, what do you tell them? Uh, the Bible, we say, you say one of the things we, we say about the Bible yes. is that uh, first, there are several things. Yes. 
uh, there's the authority of scripture. Yes. That means the Bible, uh, what the Bible says is what God says. Yes. Authority of scripture. Yes. Then we say clarity of scripture. Yes. The Bible is clear. Mm -hmm. If you can't understand the Bible, yes. the problem, for example, I'm not a medical expert. Yes. So I, if I don't understand a medical condition, yes. I don't say it does not exist. Yes. And neither can I say it cannot be understood. Yes. Uh, it's the same case. Mm -hmm. If you can't understand scripture, yes. it's not because it can't be understood. Yes. It's only you who can't understand. It. Yes. So clarity, the scripture is clear. Yes. So we've talked about authority of scripture, clarity of scripture, yes. then necessity of scripture. The Bible is necessary for salvation and spiritual growth. Yes. And then, of course, the sufficiency of Scripture. Yes. The Scripture is sufficient mm -hmm. for everything we need for life and practice. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bishop Gashuki, uh, for first of all, for uh, allowing us to have a conversation with you. And thank you for the good work that we are doing to ensure that uh, we live by uh, the requirement, the dictates of the Bible and uh, the journey of ensuring that we draw each other to Christ. Mm. We wish to thank you so much. And on behalf of the entire production team that made this possible at the point uh, and the team at uh, Glorious Chapel, we wish to extend our sincere gratitude for you for making this possible. And until next time when we do this, thank you so much. And Asante Sana. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Duncan. Asante. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Too. Thank you. Asante. <laughs>